And yeah, I'm all, let's go for a walk. So dancing is one of the loves of my life. I've been doing it on and off since I can remember. Hula dancing was my first exhibition in grammar school. Got up in front of the whole school and hula dance. And now I'm lucky to have two dance partners. I have Scott for my swing dance partner and I have Lucas for my salsa dance partner. Yay! So I'm a lucky person. guys in but they don't come to mind right now so I have Josephine Baker I have Louise Bourgeois I have Maria Popova and we have Josephine Baker and I mentioned Beverly Pepper I think that's it yeah yeah that's the perfect dinner I was born and raised in Southern California and the piece of property that I grew up on was an acre of land and my father um, he, he was a floral designer who eventually became a, a businessman with a wholesale evergreens and cut flowers. The thing I remember most about those experiences is my mother would say, hey Pete, bring in some flowers for dinner. And he'd be picking these things out of the garden. And when he came in, he had this perfectly composed bouquet. Was like, so, so that was a, a fond memory. And I, my dreams up until about a year ago were always of that house. And on that land, there was fruit trees, there was macadamia nut, carob, and all the stone fruits, and avocado trees, and it was just, it's like a little park. And Scott and I went back to see the homestead, and it was gone. Nothing was there. There was six, the five houses, and the only, I, I kept going, where's the house, where's the house? There was a stone in that area they built uh, oftentimes with these round stones because it was, I guess geographically at one time there was river washed boulders because it, the site where my grew up was event, was originally an olive grove. So therefore there was eight, olive, 10 olive trees on the property at least. So there was this, there was one column that was left because the next door neighbor's house was the same and on the top of the column was a white stone that said 2640 and I had that was a number I had painted on that stone and that was the address so that was the end of where I grew up I grew up in Southern California Ding! <laughs> my dad came from Italy my mom came from Oakland and they they moved down there my brother was born up north and um, I just kept moving further north I felt that all my bad personality traits were a result of being born and raised in Southern California the roots of of who I am genetically came from the north and I think that's why I'm comfortable here. My sculpture has been something that's been difficult for me. Um, I'm not quite sure why. And I've got this wonderful studio that I just acquired not that long ago. And I go there and I just feel like, oh, I'm so lucky. And things will come my way that are, that are just interesting. Uh, and I'll start start on it, then something will happen physically or mentally that will stop me. But the, I think the last time I was there, it's on a, se a seven acre piece of land, and there's other, so a series of barns, but um, I'm pretty much the only artist that's there, so it's very quiet. And I started walking the land, and I discovered these habitats. And I started photographing the habitats. and. I gotta tell you about one because it's just fabulous. So picture this field, a wide open field, and picture this big mound of blackberries. And that's, that's it's almost like a mountain, and you see Sonoma Mountain in the background kind of mirroring that shape. And walking and looking and seeing like these little entry, entryways. And then I walked around the back and I saw some scats. So I figured that probably it's habitat for raccoons on the ground floor. And on the top floor, I could see birds going in and out. So it's kind of a condominium with ra raccoons on the bottom floor and birds on the top floor. And then I walked further and I saw a jackrabbit habitat, which is kind of was kind of going through these, it's almost like a tunnel through these, uh, through these bushes. 
And at the same time, I've been photographing horizons. And I think both these things bring me peace. The nature and then the horizons is pretty much nothing, except maybe when I did the Oregon coast, just you can see the ocean and the gray sky. So it's just, it's very, very uh, quiet and peaceful. And I don't know where I'm going with this. My medium has been stone. The piece that I started in my studio does have a small piece of stone in it. So I don't, I don't know what comes next. I've got a studio, a beautiful studio that is not for stone working. So I say it's my studio of what comes next. And I have my elegant coffee cup for my champagne, my Prosecco. All right. Salute per tutti. Salute. <laughs> so, especially during these times, I think a lot about a perfect day. And what comes to mind is a day on the island of Morea. I think I'm really an island person. I always saw myself retiring there. But on the Isle of Morea, there's just, everybody is so casual. Uh, they get the fish from the ocean. There's no private property. There is some, but you can kind of walk on it. Um, the people are just so, their life is slow. Their life is slow and nature bound. And uh, I guess I'm a nature girl, so that, that really appeals to me as a perfect day because uh, even though here we are in a beautiful place, Schillenberger Park, it's not Morea. We, uh, there's just energy. This is the Bay Area. There's an energy. Where on the island of Morea, there is, that doesn't exist. You can ride your bike around. You can lounge in the Palapa. You can have dinner in the pier at a French restaurant. It's lovely. I'm Suzanne Biaggi. Love being here on the river. Hope you all can join me someday.